All right. Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Ben Newman. I study coronaviruses, uh, even found a couple of coronaviruses. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is Ask Dr. Ben. Let's try it. Uh, next question is from Lisa. And Lisa, yeah, you've been here since pretty much the beginning. Yeah, thank you for uh, another question. Uh, so let's see. Hi, I hope that you're all keeping well and uh, your sanity. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> one of the two you pick. Yeah. Um, let's see. I had a brief chat with a medical professional this morning who sent me this link. Oh, good God. Okay, let's see what we've done. Uh, has prompted my question regarding the source of the pandemic. Is there any clearer evidence regarding the source yet? Oh, yeah, okay, fine. Um, then it goes to a um, uh, goes to a link to an article in uh, Boston Magazine. Not known for publication of primary scientific uh, results, but perhaps in this case, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, the article is about um, uh, the thoughts and musings of Alina Chan, who it says is very impressively uh, from Harvard, MIT, and the Broad Institute uh, for Genomics, um, which is a giant uh, just genome sequencing factory. They are titans in the uh, nucleotide sequencing world. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they're really good at that. Um, uh, the other thing, uh, I found her LinkedIn page, uh, she's a postdoc. And so a postdoc is usually going to be the junior member of any lab. They've just graduated with their PhD. They're just starting out in the world. Um, and some of them know a lot. And some of them are, frankly, still, you know, a little rough around the edges. And you got to, yeah, you got to work it, uh, you know, <laughs> smooth things off a little bit before they're ready, uh, all polished up and ready. Um, yeah, I think that's the case here. Uh, so looking through the article here, just a moment, let me click to my article tab. There we go. Yeah. Okay. It's basically an article where she's, she's taking you through things that are in part correct, but it's this sort of, um, let's say naive outsider's perspective. So for somebody who had never seen a coronavirus before, this might be the first five or six things that you would test out. If you didn't, if you weren't really into reading papers about what other people have found, or you weren't really interested in looking at any other coronaviruses, this might be the first things that you would look at. And so she's come to the uh, opinion and whatever, everybody's entitled to their opinion, no matter how wrong, um, uh, that uh, the virus could have escaped from a lab in China. Yeah. And uh, there's no, there's no evidence for that. And it's the usual uh, goofy stuff in there. Uh, we can, scroll down and find a couple of the uh, uh, real clangers in here. Let's see. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So, so she's uh, off work. Uh, she's uh, stuck with nothing to do. Uh, and it's like, let's figure out the origin of COVID. Why not? And she's not alone. A lot of people have tried to do this. And uh, yeah, you see them all over the place. They think that because they've done alignment with 10 uh, SARS-CoV-1 and 2 genomes, that they're now the world's foremost expert on uh, coronavirus evolution. And, you know, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> but also, it doesn't work that way. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, um, she came across an article about the remarkable stability of the virus. That may be true that there was an article written, but it's not remarkably stable. The virus is changing at a pretty constant rate, and it's almost exactly the same rate as the flu virus changes. It's just that the flu virus started so much longer ago, like before recorded human history, and has been changing, 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 and spreading out and splitting that we now have all these different flu strains. And yeah, it's not so much that you're going to get one strain that's going to turn into something else. It's more that there are so many darn strains out there that, uh, yeah, you may get one that we, we weren't prepared for. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not moving particularly fast. There are just a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, yeah, she's looking and finding out that sure enough, uh, coronavirus is uh, still pretty close to its origin, which, yeah, it first comes over to people probably late November um, uh, 2019. That's uh, all the studies so far have kind of pointed to a date somewhere around that time, uh, plus or minus maybe two weeks. Yeah. Um, and then from this, um, we got words like bingo, which is probably just 
artistic license by whoever's writing the story. They're trying to pep it up a little bit. Uh, um, uh, and, uh, yeah, then we got some uh, sort of uh, conspiracy mongering. Um, uh, the only mention I can find of Alina Chen on the Broad Institute uh, website is actually where uh, she and a couple of people are uh, looking at the... There was a case of some frozen fish, I think maybe frozen salmon, that showed up in China and they were testing just everything at the time. Somebody swabbed the salmon, they came back positive for COVID. And so at first, people were jumping to the conclusion that, oh my gosh, it's a fish to human virus. This virus that's only ever been seen in land-dwelling mammals before, but what the heck, yeah. Uh, yeah, salmon, I don't know. <laughs> Biologically very different, and that's, that's kind of a red flag. Um, and then uh, she was actually part of the team that came up with the conclusion that it probably wasn't the fish that was infected. The virus was on the outside of the fish anyway, and that's not where you, we wear our viruses on the inside when we're infected, right? Uh, they decided it was probably from a person who uh, was infected who had packed the fish or handled the fish at some point uh, during the chain. And I actually never heard what came out of that story. I don't know if they found that person um, or not, but uh, it was pretty impressive uh, that they were... Uh, at the level where they were actually even testing uh, frozen frozen fish yeah, shipments. Yeah, so. Um, and then from there, it's uh, mutations. Um, we're mentioning uh, political figures in there, uh, president of the U.S. Um, yeah, we're mentioning bioweapon fantasies that she's trying not to give any uh, particular credence to. And I don't know. Uh, it's just it's somebody that's trying their best and doesn't really know what they're doing and because they're lacking all the context they're jumping to the wrong conclusion and it feels like a person that is probably just legitimately curious about this stuff that is i don't know if it's willingly or not being sort of you know pushed out be like oh say tell the people the thing that you told me you know by by other people that ought to know better i would say Kind of like yeah, I felt about uh, uh, Dr. Mikovits in the uh, pandemic thing. It's just if you got somebody that's kind of unhinged and has goofy thoughts, I don't know where where journalistic um, ethics. You, you don't just roll them out and give them a platform to say whatever to any number of people. You, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So I don't like it. I don't think there's anything to it. Uh, there's no new evidence in this. There's no paper that I can see behind this. There's just nothing of any substance to this. And yeah, I guess the virus could have come from a lab, but the initial cases are all in that seafood market. And so it's probably more likely somebody that is um, uh, trading in the seafood market uh, and it was more than just seafood there. It was a proper wet market. So it may even be uh, coming in on uh, some sort of uh, contaminated meat. It may be coming in on uh, illegal shipments of pangolins, which were definitely uh, illegally shipped to a lot of places around there. Yeah. And um, it may have come uh, directly from bats to uh, some other intermediate animal and then to a person. It's hard to say. Um, and I haven't seen a convincing uh, um, argument. I would say the other thing that um, uh, is mentioned in here is that uh, she looked and found just a handful. It sounds like a couple of dozen uh, mutations between um, the uh, pangolin virus and the one, the early ones in people. That's only true if you look at just the right part of the genome and just a little tiny smidge of the genome, like maybe a little part of the spike gene, the receptor binding domain, maybe, maybe. Because the pangolin sequences are several thousand nucleotides different from the one that's in humans. And the nearest bat strain is still about a thousand nucleotides different from one that's in humans. And you just can't make a thousand changes in a virus that takes years and years and years of natural selection. Maybe something like um, 50 or 100 years worth. And uh, yeah, so this is, this is not what happened. <laughs> It's just one of these viruses that comes from nature, and it got into people. So, yeah, that's... Anyway, anyway, that's my two cents on it. This is uh, more nonsense, but uh, she seems happy in her photo in front of the Broad Institute sign, so good for her in that, uh, 
in that sense alone. Yeah. <laughs> and I wish people would stop. I just wish people would stop it with this. It doesn't it doesn't help anybody. It's there's no evidence behind it. This idea that it's come from a lab and is a nefarious, you know, uh, product of uh, evil China or whatever. It's just it's a dumb, baseless theory that gets people fired up and gives them a chance to be mad at somebody else rather than just um, having to live in a world where everything has a couple of viruses at any one time, every tree, plant, insect, and bat, and those viruses move around. That's the world that science tells us we live in, and you can look in pretty much anything and you'll find the viruses. They are just right there. You can read them, sequence them, grow them, whatever. We live in a world of viruses. They are more numerous than any other living thing, at least uh, outnumbering living things by 10 to 1. Um, and that's including all the single-celled living things out there. It's just, uh, yeah, a lot more viruses than people uh, give them credit for. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Theories like this are, um, yeah, baseless and counterproductive. And they don't lead anywhere. They just kind of lead us further from a solution because I just feel like the focus needs to be on stopping the virus and getting at least whatever we can of our world back together once we're on the other side of this virus, not picking a fight and starting a war over nothing, over a made-up thing <laughs> while we're supposed to be trying to fight the virus. It's, it's distraction. I can understand why magicians stay in business. One, they're mostly pretty good at their job. And two, people are not very good at spotting what's actually going on. They'll sometimes go for the big hand flourish rather than, you know, watching the other hand, which is doing all the stuff. <sighs> so there you go. <laughs> yeah, don't fall, don't fall for the magic trick. It's, it's not a very good one. It's just another natural virus. Um, I don't know if that's going to convince anybody, but uh, whatever. Yeah, got to keep trying, right? <laughs> Thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben. That was actually a very good question, and I was not aware of the scoofball. Thank you for bringing her to my attention. <laughs>